Hi everyone, this is KK6 Foxtrot Unifrontane with another ham radio project video. Uh, this time I'm going to show you a project that combines ham radio, 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, which uh, we use for Wi-Fi, and mesh networking, and using old Linksys uh, routers. Uh, this isn't so much homebrewing as it is system integration, but I thought it'd be a little fun project anyway. Um, for those of you who don't know what mesh networking is, it's when you have uh, network nodes like these Linksys routers, uh, which talk to each other um, directly instead of through a central centralized router. So normally you might connect to your home home uh, router and every all the traffic goes through that one router. Uh, in this case, every node talks to each other. And so the advantages of that are it's more robust. Uh, you can bring nodes in and out. Uh, there's not configuration. Uh, no central router. It's, it's actually, uh, if a node or a link fails, you can still get through. Um, they use them a lot in the military and not so much in everyday networking, but uh, fun to do anyway. Um, so for the ham radio enthusiasts out there, the, uh, uh, there are a few mesh projects you ought to be aware of. Um, uh, the first out there is called Broadband Hamnet, which was originally known as HSMM-Mesh. Uh, and that used old Linksys WRT54G routers. Um, and that's what I've actually got here. One, uh, the one on the right is obviously uh, out as it is in an original box. In the left I've actually created one which is portable and goes in a little semi-waterproof box. It's not actually waterproof but at least it's a little bit uh, more robust than the normal normal box. And uh, the other the other project you want to know about is AREDN uh, uh, which is an offspring of Broadband Hamnet which uh, doesn't use the WRT routers. It actually uses a uh, Ubiquiti gear and Ubiquiti is a maker of of industrial uh, Wi-Fi equipment, and it's used a lot in in uh, direct wireless internet service providers, and uh, for linking to other offices. And that stuff is uh, a lot more uh, designed for outdoors. Uh, it's usually enclosed. It has high gain um, antennas, and uh, so that's what uh, AREDN does. And um, I actually like the WRT54G stuff that the uh, broadband Hamnet guys have created. Uh, mostly because I like tinkering with things and if you go and buy Ubiquiti gear, it great, works great, but you know what? There's not a whole lot of tinkering and obviously you don't have to build a box, you don't have to do uh, anything except for go stick it out there, load the software and configure it. So uh, it's kind of fun to use the uh, broadband handnet stuff, the HSMM mesh stuff. So uh, I actually li I like it and I'm glad they've kept it alive and running. So uh, let's take a look at what we've got here. So. Um, uh, here's the, uh, a WRT54G uh, as it stands. Uh, you have to make sure when you grab these, uh, you can, they're actually very cheap. You can get them from anywhere from $5 to, um, to, uh, to $15. Um, uh, if, you are, if, you're, if you're going around your ham fest or on Craigslist uh, or heck, even if you go to an e-waste day, you might actually get some of these free. <laughs> they're pretty old. Um, but but they're great because they are uh, uh, infinitely hackable, and so the story there is uh, the designers of the uh, 54G decide they use Linux as their platform, and uh, that's all great except for uh, as anyone who's done open source knows, you're supposed to release your source code, and they didn't do that, but someone uh, forced them to do it. So all of a sudden, the entire source code for this router was available for free. And uh, as you know, uh, hackers and developers went out there and they, they essentially built their own software for this. They uh, have created uh, highly featured, you know, uh, enterprise grade stuff that ran on these routers, which were originally kind of a, a home small business router. And uh, for us hams, they, they, they were able to go in and, and create our mesh software. So um, that's the WTRT54G in the original box. So. Uh, on the left here, and I'll focus in a little bit there, um, that is my uh, version uh, of the mesh. And what I have here is instead of the Linksys box, I have put it in a, a Sterilite container, which uh, this must have been used by my kids for something, um, toys probably. And inside there, and I'm going to take a look here, inside there I pulled out the, the board that was originally in that, uh, that Linksys box and mounted on a piece of wood. Uh, there's a uh, on-off switch over here, and go ahead and turn that on there and see the blinky lights. Those are the same blinky lights as you see on the uh, the uh, other WRT-G uh, there. And um, 
Uh, underneath, you can't quite see it, is a, a 7, uh, seven uh, amp hour SLA battery um, mounted sideways. And over here uh, is a cheap eBay solar controller, which uh, I wouldn't trust them too much, but they, they work okay, but <laughs> you could do better. But they're small, and I had one. So uh, uh, that is connected to this cable. This cable actually goes to a solar panel, which is, of course, sitting in just a garage, so it's not doing much. But I, I have it out there on a 15-watt uh, 15 uh, Home Depot, uh, not Home Depot, uh, Harbor Freight. A solar panel so it will charge that SLA battery during the day um, on the uh, other side here the other side here is the uh, connectors so uh, the connectors uh, there are uh, uh, two antennas these are just the stock antennas at this point and uh, there's an uh, the Ethernet ports and I'm only using one of them out to the front uh, not very waterproof here you could probably put a gasket but uh, it was just a, a fun project. So uh, we're going to log in and you'll see what the mesh network looks like. Just a second. Okay, before we log in, uh, this is the insides of it. Um, uh, this is my uh, uh, okay built little shelf I made. Um, there's a couple of posts on each corner and a few things to keep that battery from moving. Uh, and uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's it. So... Um, not not a very fancy thing, but it keeps uh, all of it together and keeps that battery from smashing the board when you put it in. Um, okay, so let's look at the mesh. I'm going to move over here to the monitor and uh, adjust that for a second here. And what do we have here? We get there. So um, this is the uh, the broadband hamnet uh, uh, mesh status. So um, the this is going from the Ethernet cable to the, the first Linksys right there, uh, which you kind of see there. And uh, this gives me uh, the status of the, the mesh, what the Wi-Fi address is, um, uh, and so on. And if you click on mesh status, this tells you what do you see in the, the mesh. And um, we are on KK6FUT2, that's the, uh, the, the one we're logged into. And the other one we can see is KK6FUT-1. And uh, this is uh, the one that's in the in the plastic box, or was in the plastic box. And uh, if uh, LQ, it tells you what the quality of the link is. Um, we are sitting next to each other, so hopefully uh, LQ should be 100%, which means all the packets are going through and there's no loss. And uh, you click on that, and that will actually go across the mesh network and go to the other machine. And this gives you... Um, more information. So this shows you the opposite, uh, opposite information there. The the mesh status. So now we're on, we're on KK6 FUT1, which is the one in the box. Um, so if you have a lot more mesh nodes, you can go to all of those, and you can see uh, it actually can tell you what the routing is and how to get there and na the neighbors. And uh, I only have two nodes running right now, so uh, uh, that is uh, that's what you see there. Um, I actually uh, ran the AREDN uh, software on some borrowed uh, Ubiquiti equipment earlier today and uh, into our local network and there's about uh, 30, 30 machines in that network and uh, different link qualities and all that. So uh, other things you can do here is you can look at OLSR which is the routing protocol that they're using uh, which is uh, uh, actually generally available for network use and it tells you a lot of information about hops and positions and topology and how to get from here to there. Um, and go back to our status page here. Uh, you can also scan for Wi-Fi networks. And you hit the Wi-Fi scan and it tells you what it sees. And it sees broadband hemnet-20-v3 dash dash which is uh, our network and my home network. So there you have my uh, my SSID for my home network. Don't, don't uh, abuse it. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, you can actually do night mode too where it changes the screen colors. Um, so that uh, easier to read at night. Um, so so uh, anyway, that's a quick overview of how this mesh works. So um, uh, what can you do with the mesh? Well, uh, the things that you might want to do on it, that hams have already been doing things on it, is you can run chat. Uh, you can run a chat program across your mesh nodes. Um, you can run actually anything that runs over the internet. So you can run video, webcams, people have webcams up on the top of repeater sites that you can get into. Um, you can also uh, 
Uh, you can also uh, have a bulletin board and exchange messages. Uh, you can do email. People have email servers running on there. Um, there's, there's a bunch of uh, other things you can do. Uh, for the experimenters and people who like homebrewing, uh, you can actually run the same software, the, the uh, Broadband Hamnet software on Raspberry Pi. And uh, uh, I, I actually uh, probably will do that next, put the Raspberry Pi running the same software and an Ethernet card, and you can make your own embedded uh, mesh networks, uh, mesh nodes. So, for example, you could put a weather station out in your backyard, um, which would automatically connect to your network. You could um, put a webcam on your Raspberry Pi using the same mesh uh, software. Um, now, we've talked about this all as ham, and it happens that wi the, the Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz uh, spectrum actually overlaps the ham network. Uh, one thing I haven't done, but you can do, is you can actually go and replace the crystals in these Linksys routers and move these into a ham exclusive part of the band. And that involves basically two connections, uh, changing out one crystal, well, that's actually, uh, if you look at the board, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at the board. There's actually a crystal right inside this, uh, inside that metal case, uh, right about there. And if you open the case and change out the crystal, you can shift the frequencies ever so slightly. And uh, that uh, that's great because number one is nobody but hams will be able to uh, see what you're sending. And the other thing is uh, it'll avoid some of the link congestion problems that uh, you have right now. Um, Right now, most people are running this on channel one, uh, on on uh, on what, which, which is the same channel one as as a Wi-Fi network would be. And if you ever look at a a list of access points, there's a lot of people running on channel one. And so uh, that is actually why the AREDN people don't like the the Linksys routers. Is it does overlap with existing Wi-Fi service, uh, which means that it's harder to make connections. That means that your uh, potentially uh, 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 interfering with them and uh, uh, one thing I haven't done here that I'm going to do is uh, play with some uh, gain antennas and uh, gain antennas on that uh, on those uh, instead of the stock antennas uh, can put out a lot more signal and go a lot farther and the way the uh, FCC regulates this um, there's part 15 versus part 97 and uh, one is the consumer uh, uh, rules and the other one is the hand rules and um, uh, consumers they only let these uh, the piece of equipment interfere with a little bit of other people so I think people said about three or four houses is the signal and if you're a ham and you put a gain antenna or a dish or a parabola on this you could go for 30 miles <laughs> so um, it's a quite a quite a different thing so uh, anyway, uh, changing the chip uh, helps in that area. Uh, of course, everyone else you want to connect to is going to have to have the same thing. Um, I actually think this is better as an experimenter's platform as opposed to a infrastructure or emergency network, which is what the AREDN guys do. Um, you know, they're using commercial equipment, weatherproof, installed. Uh, it's meant really for emergency communications. Uh, whereas uh, for me, I think this is just kind of cool to build a little mesh node of your own. So um, let's see here. What, what do you? What can you do with this? Uh, obviously, you can do what I did and throw it in a box, which is always fun. Uh, you can uh, build your own antennas. I actually uh, uh, built a Yagi, which I forgot to bring in here. And uh, you can build uh, uh, omnidirectional gain antennas. That might be one of my next. Um, a lot of ideas there. Uh, you can use Raspberry Pi and build your own of these. Uh, I have this one solar powered. Uh, right now it's not connected in, so you could build your own little solar powered node that would sit on your hill and run all day with no power. Um, or if the power's out, would you could tow this to an emergency uh, communication center and use it as a portable communication device for down the block. Um, there's uh, there's a lot of things you can do. So uh, you can build a web camera. Um, I think I mentioned that with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, put a web server on there, put a database, uh, connect up uh, your, your someone, someone I believe uh, on the uh, Hamnet forum said you can uh, you know build a chicken coop cam and, <laughs> and, and get there. So this is kind of fun. So this is a little bit of the, uh, the mesh, uh, ham mesh networking and uh, with the Linksys uh, WRT54Gs. Um, and uh, if you want inf more information on it, uh, broadband-hamnet.org is a great place and also AE, 
uh, AREDN.org uh, if you're more interested in the, uh, the, the emergency aspect and building you know, more of a robust uh, infrastructure network. Um, I recommend uh, you check out both of those. Uh, this is KK6 Foxtrot Infantango.